cities. The true success indicator has been from the fans. Well, it's going out. And don't you know we're going to spin Hello and welcome to the club. I'm your host, Mars, and this is the Upper 90 Club, a roundtable podcast where five friends discuss the Columbus crew. On this episode... Four friends. Yeah, yeah we'll, get, we'll get to that in a second. Where friends okay. discuss the Columbus crew. On this episode, we do a full review of last Saturday's one-to-one draw against New England Revolution. Revolution. President Bird from the Discord Eka, the Crew Discord recaps the Crew 2 Cappy's home opener mm-hmm. against Revs 2. Was the home opener, right? Correct. It was? Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, we spoke with Katie Hadley from Mecklenburg Massive, the Charlotte-based remote crew supporters group. And finally, we check our predictions from last week to see if anyone guessed that we'd get a draw. And we cast okay. our predictions for this weekend's game at Charlotte on the 22nd. As always, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Upper 90 Club Pod. And now you can find us. Uh, oh, you can join Ben's dad to watch full episodes and clips on YouTube at Upper 90 Club. With me in the club are Ben, Trey, and Haas. Mark called in sick. So get well soon and stop working so much. Thoughts and prayers, Morty Pants. Yeah. Uh, so to the rest of you, say hi, guys. Hi, hi guys. guys. Uh, so 90s night. We spent a lot of time talking about uh, the 90s. Ben's got his jersey. It Look showed at it. up in time. It's it looking showed up really good. way in time. T- t- so, Ben, since you always go first... Mm-hmm. And I heard that you did not go to the game. Tell Allegedly. us about tell us about your jersey and uh, yeah, show it off a little bit. Oh, it's great. I think we had talked about before. I, I it's it looks awesome. Boy, I'm not doing a good job of showing it for the people no, watching. You're not. Oh. All right. Well, it's on the website. I don't think I'm quite the model for a jersey. It looks sweet. Even like the non-fit ones. It's, it's got a good. I mean, what is the vibe? Like my first thought was that it was like the background of the third grade, you know, 1996 it's the cup. Trapper picture. Like the party cup. Ooh, yeah. Trapper party, Yeah, keeper. it's a party cup. Party but cup. it looks like a trapper Okay, keeper. yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, good job. Yeah, Supporter supply, right? Yep. Yeah, and I do like the, I, I again, I like the light blue. Yeah, it's to, it does remind me of the four Columbus jersey, which I still big fan of the what is this periwinkle? That is not the four Columbus color. That is like no. a teal. And the, to disagree. The it's, it's different. It's definitely different. It's close. Well, and, and the pink. The biggest difference is they actually used an appropriate amount of it and it, it looks good. Like, does your head fit through the head hole? Yeah, I got a real tiny head though. I got a real like okay. you know the original super like Super Mario Brothers movie with the Goombas. Because I know ah. Morgan was joking about it at some point. The one one of the ones I have the mellow yellow one. It's like I gotta like pull my head through. You guys well, probably have average the, heads. The V the V is a good look. Um. So yeah. anyway, all right. So yeah. So go nineties. Uh, Mort, I know went to the game. So mm-hmm. he did not dress nineties, which nope. I ask him. That's the first thing I ask him. Okay. So, all yeah, right. Uh, but Trey, you did. <laughs> is that right? Man, oh, man, man. I, I, I talked a bit about this earlier. Yeah. Describe your look for, for the big night. Man, it was like the most disappointing thing I've done in a while. Cause, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I think this is like, which is saying this is, whole this is like, it, and I'm getting old moment. Because, you know, when you're growing up and they do, like, 70s night or 80s night and, like, you dress and you're, like, a caricature of, like, what those decades were like. Yes. 90s is me, us. Right. So, yeah, so yeah. I was like, no, I'm going to dress like what I dressed like in the 90s. Like, that's 90s to me, you know. Put, I cut a pair of shorts and the long jorts that came down above the knees. Yeah. I had my, my Birks, my Birkenstocks with sandals on mm-hmm. and did the butt cut. I looked in the mirror and I describe for the listeners what the butt cut is. <laughs> oh, here it is. Here it is. I looked like Dwight Schrute. And <laughs> <laughs> it's and like a hole cut. It's like a yes. center part, right? Yeah. It was center a center part. part with But it was longer back in the day. Like we Yeah. It was way longer back in the day, but all I was was 
it was looking in the mirror and it was myself from the 90s 20 years later yeah and it was the saddest thing i've seen in a long time yeah <laughs> yeah i made it mom i i i changed all my clothes put a hat on and said honey let's go oh okay oh, so i thought you went you to the bailed. game oh no you bailed. Nope. i was gonna say uh, i don't recall that nope i literally put a hat on and went nope i i can't do it okay. i just all right well we have sent a, a photo of we have hair, a picture was, yeah we have a picture of it so funny. we'll have to we'll have to we can post the picture posted, it's yeah. I, there's no shame in 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 it it just was yeah uh, a moment in time that i don't want to relive of butt cuts hey, like man. a yeah it's like a bowl cut but the Party. goal was to like shave under and part in the middle yeah. yeah but unfortunately for me they did the bowl cut and my barber which was the next to the soccer place the sports cuts we went to the same place yeah. of course we did because we have we lived in the same life yeah. together we're the same person but they she said i'm gonna train your part so she for like two years parted my hair but kept the bangs <laughs> i'll i'll try to find a photo because she's like we just got to train the part because you can't just part your hair uh it's 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 the worst thing i've ever it's terrible Yeah. okay so we'll add that we'll add that to the social yeah. list um mm, yep haas what about you did you uh you know, I just rocked get a, my like a Tom Selleck yellow. mustache, or probably wouldn't <laughs> no. be the right decade, but uh, mellow yellow, upper ninety club jersey. Uh, but shout out to the dude wearing the giant pair of Jinkos I saw at the tailgate. Nice. And even better was the Nickelodeon members only <laughs> jacket with Rugrats on it that looked <laughs> legit. <laughs> it was pretty sick at the tailgate. Yes. Did you post? Rugrats are making a comeback. Did you post that picture from the tailgate that you sent us? I don't think so. You don't All right, just take so random pictures this of is, people. This is a good segue. Um, <laughs> we do have an opening for unpaid media intern. If anyone is interested, <laughs> <laughs> we need help. We need help with the uh, with uh, the posting of the things. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's jump into it. Um, Revolution game. It was. Let's see. Of a revolution game. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that's good. Oh, so we are. That's was good. That, 90s? that was nineties. Uh, it had to have I been. I think 90s. so. Yeah. Nineties early early two thousands. Yeah. Crazy game of poker. Is yeah, that the song? Yeah, crowd surf to that song. Black. <laughs> no, I don't. Right. No, okay, I so, wish I wouldn't have said that. So Everyone I was hated you. I was trying. <laughs> yeah. I was trying. Everyone to, hates me now. Let's right trying now. to move on from, from right. that, but. Uh, the black rock. Let's let's out. start as always with the lineups. Haas, uh, talk us through that. Uh, no changes for the crew. Same lineup. Uh, Ramirez up top. Zelrayan Matan behind him. Farsi Morris Nagby Sands in the middle. Vallecia Deganek and Moreira in the back, and Schulte in goal. Uh, I guess lineup wise for the other team, some uh, significant uh, players out. Gustavo Bo was missing. Bobby Wood was missing. Two other forwards, and Henry Kessler has been playing well for them, and also was not not even on the bench. Yeah, injured. Okay, so first half, who stood out to you, Ben? First half, uh, I think we sent some texts out before, so I'm, I want to let other people kind of like talk about the the people, but um, I, I think Zell actually had a good game. I, I've been dogging on him a little bit for the beginning parts of uh, the year when everybody else was playing really well, but I thought he actually stepped it up and played like a, a pretty solid game, especially in the first half. I'd so, argue in the first half, almost nobody had a good game on the crew well, other than Schulte. I, I don't think, yeah, I, I think we should maybe instead of doing that, let's talk about like how we set up because um, I always watch the the preview on Apple TV. You know, they they say like, you know, they interview them and they they ask like, oh, hey, how are you, you know, getting ready for the game? And he said that he's going to have the same lineup, but he's going to play completely different. And they absolutely played completely different than how they, they than how they used to play. Like they weren't open, they weren't. I think the main focus was not to get caught on the break, mm -hmm. and so we were. Th this buildup was very slow, and a lot of our back line and our um, wingers weren't really getting into the attack. Like we were, I think we were very reactive in the first half to kind of see how they rolled out. Um, I don't know. What did you guys see? I felt like New England was preventing us from playing the way we wanted to play personally is how I saw it 
and Sands got forward a few times in the first half. He did the classic Sands, just burning someone down the left side of the field, but couldn't yeah. piece anything together. Yeah, um, and we just couldn't connect the final pass or two to do anything with it when we got in the offensive end. Yeah, I think, and I think a lot of this had to do with um, Nazi really respecting what Bruce Arena was trying to do, uh, and Bruce Arena is. A very, very, very good coach. I mean, he is a very, very good MLS coach specifically. Like he understands how to break down different MLS teams. I think past that, I don't think he's quite the international coach that we wanted him to be necessarily. But I think, especially with, I mean, they're in great form. I think they're back to where they were, what was it, two years ago when they had the most points in the league that's ever happened or something yeah. insane. That was with like Tejon Buchanan and Matt Turner and whatnot. But their team, even without Bo, I, I don't think Bobby Wood necessarily was a terrible loss because I thought their number nine, whoever that guy was, uh, I don't have it in front of Rioni. me. Veron- you, Veroni. He, he kept getting in behind Degenick. So, and again, I wasn't at the game. They did not show any replays uh, if he was offsides or not. I'm sorry, offside. But it was he offside? I know at one point when they showed no. it, he wasn't. But it always seemed like he was two or three steps past our back line. And I was yeah, like, there's ba- no way he wasn't. Based on the Apple coverage that on the rewatch, it, it didn't look like he was. But it's hard. They're not showing lines because there's no definitive answer to it. But, you know. Yeah, nope. my my take on the first half was um defending on our heels, defending on our heels, can't find the final third. Uh Aiden Morris rips it over the crossbar. Mm-hmm. You know, that like that was that scene played out a half dozen times throughout the first 45. Um yeah. I don't know, they seem they they didn't seem like they were uh, they didn't seem like they were playing poorly, but they they didn't seem like they were in control of the game. I think to piggyback that exact thought is we had chances, they had chances. Um, neither team took advantage of them. Um, it was back and forth. It was a good game to watch, but it was kind of boring at the same time. Um, but it is yeah. answering questions that we have about this team and are they a top contender in the league? Um, the crew, that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you yeah. have New England, who's a very good team. And you got Columbus coming out and standing toe to toe with them the entire first half. Yep. So I, they've got to be the best team in the East, right? I mean, I mean as like, as far as like in form, I'm not really worried about. You table. know, I, I, I yeah, I said yeah. last week that DC was a good team, and I'll stand by that. I think DC is a very actually a very good team, and I think yeah. they are going to do things. But like New Disagree. England right now is <laughs> well, but continue. Sorry. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I you know. I, I, I did I did set a reminder to call you out on DC later in the season, so don't worry. <laughs> What's the date on that? Uh, What's the expiration date on that? <laughs> yeah, it's a, whatever the I just you know whatever the last game is, I have to look it well, up again. But yeah, right, we'll, talk the, we'll yeah, talk about yeah, it then. We'll talk about it then. Don't worry. So I mean, we're so they had you know they had Gill. Hill, sure. Uh, Hill. He he played amazing. Like he was a proper ten. Like he was their Zell, and he he was all over the field. He yeah. had a great game. Their their number nine kept getting in behind our defense, which I don't think we've seen anybody else do, especially when they have a lot of possession. Because when they have possession, we drop back into a back five, or even like you know we have very few people get in behind. You know they might hit us on the counter, but this was the first time I've seen them like chip play like route one where they just like chip it to their guy Mm -hmm. and he constantly i think it was like four or five times in the first half had us beat and we came back and was able to defend which is great but that was just something i had maybe it's something that bruce arena had seen that he could exploit and he did so you know fair play to them but you know and just going through the rest of their team they did have some people out but i mean like i said before latif blessing I will say, well. I don't. I thought he got absolutely worked by you do? Aiden. No. Oh yeah, he had mm-hmm. some moments. I feel like where he played really, really? well along with Jones. Um, yeah, Jones. Yep. 
But oh yeah, absolutely. I do think. I mean, but again, Jones is someone who's not going to be here for very long. Like he's he's gone. He's going to go overseas. That guy is great, and it's great for us as a U.S. You know, also we like the U.S. men's national team. I think he is going to be a great left back slash wing back. Um, their their actual winger though, what's his name? The guy that got sent off, Barrero. I thought he would. He actually had a great game. He too. was having Dylan Barrero. Yeah, but I mean, before he got picked up that second yellow, yeah, he he was causing a lot of havoc on that outside. Well, and he never should have gotten the first yellow for bitching at the ref. Oh well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're uh, you're yeah. jumping ahead. Just, you're jumping ahead. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's yeah, let's we'll keep it on the first I half. A, I mean, I can we all agree yeah. that the first half was pretty slow. Uh, both sides got chances. Uh, maybe we were feeling out New England. Maybe we were caught on our heels. Maybe it was a little mix well, of both. And I want what to else, add to what, what else. Yeah, what else is there to add? Adding to what he was saying about him, uh, Rioni sneaking in, and I think every time that happened, it was a pass from Carlos Heel. Uh, yeah. I think Viasia was a little slow. He was struggling to keep up, and I think there were a lot of turnovers. So we didn't have five in the back. They were attacking us at that point where our wing backs were recovering, running towards our own goal while the back three, uh, they were just working the ball through them due to how quickly the ball would turn over from each side in the attacking end and then the other team would break. Um, So yeah, it was not the most entertaining first half, but there were chances from each side. Yeah, but I think that was by design. You know, the last thing I want to say is like I think the the for as far as where we stand for the crew and what Nazi was trying to do is that was by design. We we weren't playing how we were before. It was like all out attack. Like when we had the ball, it wasn't that you know five or six man press. It was way more subtle, way more subdued. It was more like we would play the ball into the channels, like try to get the ball up, but we wouldn't go crazy and we definitely weren't pressing like we used to and i think we were just kind of feeling it out and i think it was just more of a tactical you know piece here and i I don't think either i think they probably had the better of it i think you know bruce arena out coached us in the first half by a little bit but it was very close and nothing so so those are the two things that i'm talking about though and so are you saying it sounds like maybe you're saying that it's a mix of both right both that we were being less aggressive, but also that New England had more was not just surrendering control of the game to us either, right? Yeah, yeah, and I think I and you'd have to fact check me on this, but I think they aren't super possessive like how we are. But I think at the end of the first half, they actually had more possession, they which were, was which did. was the shock. Yeah, and and I don't and again I don't know if that was by design because we very well could have had more possession if that was our plan. But I feel like that wasn't our plan for whatever reason. It was a pretty minor difference, but they did have more. Okay. Yeah, I think it was 55, 45 or something like that at the end of the first half. But New England typically has like 40%, but they're just super deadly on the counter. And like when they have it, they move. Okay. So I don't know. It, it, was just, it just seemed very it, – it was – to the casual person, it was boring. I agree. But past that, I think it was very much like both teams were feeling each other out because there was a lot of respect for what each other was trying to do. And they're trying to figure it out. Yeah, a g- good team for sure. Um, so let's uh, let's take a water break here. And when we come back, we can jump into the second half. Um, we'll start with uh, some of the some of the drama around Barrero. Um, so. Uh, Let's do that, and we'll be right back. This episode of the Upper 90 Club is brought to you, as always, by Supporter Supply Company. Hi, friends. This is your good pal, Morgan Hughes, here to talk to you about a serious issue facing 96% of all crew supporters in Columbus. Why... Not enough free shipping, of course. For a limited time, now through the eventual heat death of the universe, Upper 90 Club listeners can use the promo code UPPER90BOYS, that's boys with a Z on the end of it, at checkout for free delivery on absolutely any order over $10. But Morgan, what if I order $10 worth of stickers or those goddamned buttons? 
or some other combination of small items that make you want to kill yourself. Will the free shipping still apply then, even as you curse our family, while you package up our little tiny annoying ass order for us? <laughs> of course it will. That's just how much we here at Supporter Supply value our friends at the Upper 90 Club. So head on over to supportersupply.co and use the promo code UPPER90BOYS. That's boys with a Z. At checkout for free shipping on all your orders over $10. And don't forget to tell them that your friends at the Upper 90 Club sent ya. And we're back. Um, as promised, we're going to just jump right into the yellow card uh, for Barrero. That was toward the beginning of the second half. Uh Haas, when did that happen? Can you kind of set the stage? It was the 56th minute. Okay. Um, Barrero drives down the left-hand side and kind of goes head-to-head with Marrera. He gets past Marrera, and he's taking it to the end line, and Marrera is able to catch up to him and slide in and play it off of Barrero out of bounds for a goal kick. Mm-hmm. Uh, Barrero did not think it was a goal kick and was behind the goal in front of the Nordic screaming at the referee. Oh yeah. And shaking his arms and making a big show. I think he might've like yeah. jogged up to him and yelled, continued to yell at him or something. And that is when Barrero got his first yellow card. Okay. So if you act like that, you're going to get carded like that. Yeah. Um, so that's only, it becomes more relevant later, right? Um, because he threw a tantrum, um, now he's on a yellow, um, and we know what happens later, but we'll, we'll get to that. So, um, any additional thoughts on, on that run of play or anything else to add, Ben? Yeah, I've got a lot of stuff. Go ahead. Um, lay down. Yeah. So the, so the thing that I saw on Twitter, which is, which is, which is fair is like, well, if that was the first time, you know, it, that was harsh for them because there's always somebody chirping at the at the referee. But if you watch the game, that dude at the very beginning was yelling at the ref, like constantly. He was constantly chirping at the ref and different people. And they were like, well, you should get a warning before you get a yellow. And a, a, so many people on Twitter, I kept saying like, yeah, he had gotten multiple warnings for running his mouth. So... I mean, I, I know at the beginning the 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 pro referees were saying we're going to crack down on dissent, and I totally think they should. You know, there's I, I just think it's all it, it's pretty poor disrespect if you're constantly yelling at the referee. It's annoying and it's like pointless. And if I was a referee and some guy was like yelling and pointing at me like he was because he got up and you know threw his fist at him and was like yelling at him, and he it wasn't. He didn't wait that long to pull out the yellow card. He immediately was just like, go ahead, say something. And as soon as he said something, he's like, and a yellow card. Like It was very sh- animated. Very yeah. animated. He was, and, and it was off of him. And it's like, I get being bummed out that you didn't get a corner kick because the ball went off you, but dim the brakes, dude. Like, Well, and I, got, I, yeah, he, I, I think also, I, we t- I know we talked about it or somebody mentioned it during the break and we may have talked about it when we were talking about the first half, but like, you know, a back and forth, no goals, half of soccer, you know, is it, we enjoyed watching it, seeing how the teams were playing chess and, you know, developing their, their game plans as, as the half went on, maybe for a new fan, um, they, it, it might've been boring at times the, this, I think that, that falls into the same category as the the reflex of complaining to referees is like something that gets pointed out by people who are new to watching soccer. Like, why does this have to be so dramatic? Why does yeah. there, why is there so yeah. much falling to the ground? And, you know, if somebody falls to the ground and everybody on the team raises their hand. It's like it's reflex, right? Yeah. And if you don't do something about it, you know. There will, it will get worse, right? <laughs> it will be exploited. Yeah. Will continue to be exploited. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have a good point. I mean the the thing about this game was it was very evenly officiated. I honestly think he did a very good job both ways. And when you had something like Barrero go just 
Yeah, and, and even I know Matt's going to talk about it for the second yellow card he receives, but his actions after that card were even worse. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but Ben, I think you made a good point. I mean, soccer is one of the sports that is a continuation sport that is nonstop for the entire half. Um, you don't get massive stoppages in play. You don't get substitutions. So those players are always constantly there. And if it's the same player chirping and chirping and chirping, that's when you get the ref. It's not like football where a guy can be subbed in and out play by play. Time to cool off. Time to cool off. And, oh, yeah, you know, point. so I think that does make a difference. But um, it doesn't excuse. It doesn't excuse yeah. it. And it's a poor. It, it's good to see a ref actually pull the card out and be like, yeah, dude, enough. And it I'll happens. It, the only reason why we're talking about it is because of what happens. And we can get into it here in a second after the own goal. But like, it, we wouldn't well, be talking about it if it if it. No, didn't the problem is he's stu- he's stupid enough to keep doing it, yeah. and then to commit a bad foul to get a well, second yeah. yellow. And like you were saying, it was even. He gave Matan a yellow card in the twenty third minute for his flop in the box, where there was right. just minimal contact. Minim- minimal is a strong word. Like it was just upper body, <laughs> shoulder to shoulder, essentially. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have carded him, but I mean, it, it doesn't set matter the again. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So okay. So then, yeah, you mentioned the own goal. I mean, really, the the whole first say twenty minutes or so of the second half. I, you guys tell me I'm wrong, but it seemed pretty onslaughtish, didn't it? I mean, they were just driving up that was it the left side. Uh, I think that's where the, the the own goal service came from, but yes, um, yes. I don't know. I they felt like I I felt like we saw that that kind of play develop a handful of times before yep. it actually materialized into that mistake, which was unfortunate. And um, you know, we can debate whether that was unfortunate or stupid. But um, Haas, you want to talk through that play, and then we can discuss. Yeah, and even I just want to comment, even rewatching it. Uh, at home today, you couldn't find the spot where I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be. This yeah. is where it happened." This, that's Even what I said. I knew, that's what I, I was saying about one of the goals. Uh, yeah, I, I experienced yeah. the same thing with a different play a couple of weeks ago, where it was like, the you start to see these things kind of play out, like you know, uh, almost like a a, ser- a set of of the same play, you know. But um, okay, so go ahead. So yeah. Uh, Vallecilla plays a ball over the top and no one can get on it. Again, one of those quick, we get the ball, we turn it over. Granted, he plays it over the top, so it's at least in their end. Uh, Carlos Heel gets on the ball, gives it off to Barrero. Barrero goes at Vallecilla down the left-hand side and gets by him. He plays a left-footed cross into the box. Degenek, to be fair, he gets in front of, uh, I can't think of their striker's name. Uh, Rioni. Rioni. Uh, he gets in front of him, and as he turns and tries to kick it, he kicks it into his planted leg from his right foot mm-hmm. to his left leg and into the goal. Yeah. Yep. So uh, Schulte had real no quick, chance to right, yeah. do anything. Was just help me with this. I, I and I I run the risk of being sounding stupid here. Um, Biasio was on the right side. Yes. He actually was on that. That was something that I didn't get a chance to rewatch it, but I know that he was on the opposite side. And I, don't I knew know. it was him. Yeah. But I don't when I what, look at the lineup, and, yeah, that's you know, not his side. That's not his side. They, right. Him and Marrera switched a few times throughout the game. Okay. Got it. Not permanently, but, you know, for okay. little stretches. Okay. And I think, and again, fair play to Arena, I think that's something he recognized. Like, hey, I think Marrera gets into the attack. When that happens, he leaves that side vulnerable. So like there's nobody in that back three, you know, Farsi and Sands get up. So like that's space that can be exploited and they exploited it, you know, and I, I think it was a, a good ball in. And unfortunately, I, I think and we can you guys can all, you know, give your opinion, but I think it he shaped his body correctly. He used his you know right foot to like try to get it out. And I just think it was literally just it, happenstance that it hit off his he misjudged it. Yeah. It hit, I, it hit yeah. off his heel when he went to clear it. Yeah. But, and, the, and then heel, shin, into the goal. 
Yeah, I, I mean, it, and he was so when he hit it was he he was heading towards the goal right like that where that's where his momentum mm-hmm. was going. So it's sure. hard to kick a ball when your momentum's going the other way. So I think he just got kind of misfooted. But I I think the important thing here is he his body shape was correct and he was in the right spot to make a play on the ball. He j- it yeah. that's it just that he wasn't is, he, yeah he wasn't trying to clear the ball. He didn't. He didn't take a big a big whiff at it, and it, yeah. it glanced off. He just tried to place the ball out, and when he tried to place it out, it went off the instep of his heel, went off his shin, and and, and fluke. fluke. Yeah, he, he was trying to go off like the inside of his foot, and it got to yep. the back of his foot, spinning, and then directly right. into his plant leg. Yeah, it it is what it is. Yeah, yep. that's happens. what happens. It's sports. And I think the important thing was what we saw, or at least what I saw right after that, because I was like, okay, that stinks. But he immediately runs into the back of the goal, grabs the ball, throws it out front, and starts clapping, like, come on, come on, come on, let's go. Which, you know, if it were me or any time I've seen an own goal, it's like that person falls down and is yeah. like, but, but I'm so sad. And he didn't do that. He kind of laughed it off too a little. I think yeah, he, he like had a it, chuckle. It, it was like, it was the coolest thing in my opinion that I could have seen. Like him grabbing the ball, throwing it back out there, clapping and like telling his team to go, even though he's the one that made the mistake. And everybody kind of got behind him. And it was like, I, okay. I think this team has cool. a really, a really good and supportive chemistry right you don't see a lot of i think it's the culture the i mean i i think it would be i I can't think of a ton of instances where you see outward animosity between teammates right like so that's that's that would be a low bar but um you do see people with their heads hung you know they they look like they're they need to be picked up that kind of thing but you didn't really see that um and and you don't see that with with this team. I, I think that they are generally positive, uh, very supportive of one another. So um, I, I agree. I saw that. However, after the goal, I think it wasn't as if they had a surge of attacking prowess or anything like that, right? I mean, the next several minutes yeah. were still pretty pretty on their heels, right? Um, I think yeah, it was the, more of still just like a back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Schulte had a huge save in the 62nd minute. I mean, he, and, off and of how many saving how many Duran saves Jones from Jones. how many saves did he have? He had he had a hundred. You know, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, no. He man, he stood on his head <laughs> in Spanish. Yeah, and I'll say this right now: I it is it was extremely impressive to keep them from scoring. Not I, we scored on ourselves. Right, in fair play to them for putting the ball where they need to in order for that to happen. But in general, like right. we we tied ourselves one yeah, to we one. Had, yeah, <laughs> we we tied, but we had two goals. Right. So right. he actually had eight saves, which was more than any keeper in match day, whatever eight, eight seven or eight. So he had eight saves, and he led the league in saves. Yeah, he made the bench for player of the match day. Week Sa- day. He, I'm sure he had save of the match day, no doubt. Saves, yeah. saves <laughs> of the match day. Um, okay, so then in the 65th minute, uh, Barrero picks up a second yellow. Uh, Haas described the play. So we were we the crew were working the ball out of the back. They had taken the ball away from New England passing it down, you know, doing their little triangles down the right-hand side of the field. And Barrera comes in hot and takes out Farsi, uh, studs up, got him in the back of the heel, um, then proceeded to get yellow-carded, cry a little bit, go back to Farsi, start to scream in his face while he's on the ground. Yeah, he went back to him. Aiden Morris and Barrera got in his face and got him out of there. Uh, it was pretty dramatic, but it was for sure a yellow card. The announcers were even talking about how it could have been straight red. Well, they, it, it went to VAR, and he was checking his his piece to see if it was a straight red. And what what and would the difference have been if it was a straight red suspension? Yeah, and honestly, if he didn't already have a yellow, it probably would have been a straight red. I think. I think uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's something that they can, the league can do after the game is is given additional suspension. But 
studs up from behind on the forward plant foot. Like, why? Yeah. I don't even know like, that he why came. Did he do that? It, it didn't look like he was trying to commit the foul. It was just like a bad tackle that turned into a yell. You know, like, I think he, like, in, it felt like it was out of frustration. He was, it he, felt like well, a, it felt like a I cynical it attack. Did, no, I don't. I didn't. It didn't. It didn't look like an attack to me. Although it, like it was such, a, it was, was so, very mean. it was so poorly timed that it was just like, uh, all right, I'm My taking issue, him out. I, <laughs> like I'm not going to get the ball. I'm taking him out. You know, and and that's where I the frustration agree until came, yeah. his his actions after yeah, the 100%. card made me think it was a lot more cynical of a tackle. Yeah. And more aggressive than it was, yeah. Because it's like if it's cynical, you don't go over and just yell in the guy's face. Well, right? he yeah. he like, went after the ref, and then he started to right. walk away, and he turned around and he went to say something to Farsi, which I don't know if Farsi was running his mouth beforehand, but there was no reason for him to do that. And then Aiden Morris comes over and like pushes him, and then he says something, and I thought Viasia, and then Viasia pushed him, and I thought he said Marrera. something, yeah. Yeah, it's Marrera. Was it Marrera? He was oh, like yeah. not Marrera having it. And then all of a sudden, like Aiden Morris, after pushing him, was like grabbing Marrera. Like, so whatever he said after that, he just, I don't know. He's a turd. That guy's a turd. I mean, Barrero, he was beating Farsi down the field throughout the match sure. multiple times. Those two, and then Farsi would do the same. I mean, granted, he's not a defensive player, but it was just back and forth on that side for a lot. So I do think that like they were just going at each other all game. It was a little heated. Chippy and chirpy. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so he got tossed, and then I think the floodgates did kind of open, right? I mean, uh, maybe not immediately, but seventieth minute or so. I it seemed. seemed I th I thought we w exploited the man advantage well. Agreed. All, uh, although you know, n no goals, but. Um, I thought the the pressure was good and and lots of shots and we were working the keeper. Um, anything else to say leading up to the uh, the late subs? Yeah, I thought I think it's interesting where you know you have a red card at six in the sixty fifth minute and then there isn't a sub for eleven minutes. So like no one has made a tactical change. And then what they did is um, Bruce Arena subbed in uh, good old Josie Altador. Why? For Veroni. <laughs> Why? And so, but the <laughs> yeah. weird part about this is like, you don't sub in Josie for, I don't know why he would sub him in for that guy unless it was like, because that's a like for like. And yeah. you know, Josie isn't going to hustle. You know, he isn't going to like shut down shop. I guess he's more of a, a point man, but so he, was. He's being a bruiser. Kind he of, but he was, was like he slow. ran into Nagby multiple times. He fouled a bunch of us. He kept fouling us. Like, <laughs> that's all he to, did. I want you he to go out there and bruiser, foul everyone. <laughs> it's like the what is yeah, it the hockey much. guy? What's his name? Where he comes in and he's just supposed to like just be just pick fights or whatever. I don't know. It just seemed like bizarre. And then uh, you know, I think Nancy they, they call that the hustle bot. The hostile bot. Yes. Hey, I didn't bring it up. There wasn't hostile a lot of hostile bot. bot. Hostile bot. Hostile bot. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, right. But I mean, All we right. didn't. We didn't. So the red card was a sixty-five. It took us fourteen minutes to make a sub, and then at that point, we made a double sub. But my question for you guys that I always think about when I see this is, you know, you have a red card and you go down a man, and it seems like you know, all of a sudden the, you're right. The floodgates opened and we just kept having pressure for the rest of the game and it was great. But how much does one person really matter in a, in a soccer game? Is that crazy? What Am do you I mean by that? I mean, that? What do you mean by that? So, like, Oh, they oh change what, their is, tactics. what is losing one person? Mean? Because it seems like anytime that happens, they, what the defensive team or the person who loses the player panics and then they just try to park the bus, and it, it just seems like it never works whenever I watch games like that. And I've been watching and playing soccer since I was like, I don't know. You see teams come back a man down, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, some, I don't it's, know. That's what I'm saying. Like, oh, okay. you know, if, if, if I you're... Think it's, no, it's two separate things. If, if you are already up a goal and you can park the bus, being down a man isn't nearly as detrimental because you don't have to stretch the field. You don't have to open yourself up to be exposed where a counter with numbers would hurt you. If you're playing from behind and you're down a man, 
it's the exact opposite. It's going to hurt you. New England was in a perfect situation this time where they could put eight people behind Josie up top to hopefully win the ball and then keep winning it and clearing it out. They didn't this, maybe maybe the, the second bus. half was no, like the didn't. perfect uh inverse porter, right? Because like I God, all those ties that we had at the end of last season were totally being say. in the lead and thinking we, we could park exactly. and it wasn't a bus. It was like, you know, a VW bus or something smaller than a bus. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it was like, a Prius. It wasn't It was big your enough. Prius that barely works. <laughs> With one headlight. It was With not bus, big enough. Bus made of Swiss cheese. <laughs> it was not big enough to stop getting the goals in. So like, yeah, I mean, I hear you. I think that was a unique case. And I was, you know, that line that I just made was, was for comedy's sake. But like, um, they they seem to be doing an okay job of keeping us out of the goal with 10 men. Right. And they'd still, I, I, they I still sent know. five men forward a few times, but they didn't, they kept the back four there in their half the entire time. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't like completely parking the bus, but they were clogging up the middle of the field a lot more than they were previous idling, idling the bus. So, uh, then, so here's my thought. Can I make a comment on the subs? Yeah, shoot. So then was it the next day? Must have been Sunday, yesterday. Was the Crew 2 game? Yeah. And we'll hear about mm-hmm. that. But they borrowed so much of the staff. Uh, maybe I, I didn't actually cross-reference this, so I'm I'm sorry that I'm doing this to everyone. It was either five but, or six players. But like what weren't, weren't they oh. many of the players who were the late subs? Zawadski. Right, it was, it was almost the entire bench. JRR, eight players from the bench, but but they were also the late subs, and so the thought that yeah. I had uh, in the rewatch when I saw the subs coming on so late, so right starting in the 79th, 79th and and yeah. and many later, right, um, was. Are we making late subs? Uh, like this is crazy to say, but like, are we making late subs so that they can do double duty with the second team? Like, is that what's? Is that why we're waiting so long to it's make? It's just how he's done it. Okay, it's how how he's done it. He, his subs are so late every game. I don't yeah, yeah, quite yeah. understand it. Well, I, I'm trying to understand it. I'm, like, <laughs> what I'm saying is like, could this be part of the calculus? I, I don't know. I, it would. It seems like it would be too crazy to sacrifice so. the quality of yeah. the first team to to preserve legs to for the second for the team. Cappies. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. think similar to what Ben said earlier, I think, you know, they brought Altador on ten minutes, eleven minutes after the red card. So that would be seventy five, right? So Ish. he kind of waited to see yeah. how they were gonna react. Yeah. And then in the seventy ninth minute Jason Russell Rowe came on for Vallecia. Yao Yaboa came on for Aiden Morris. And Which I was interesting. I was trying mm-hmm. to understand if they were going to a back four at that point. Yeah. Because, but I don't think they did. It was like two people in the back. Yeah. And my notes just say like, what formation were we even playing? It was like a, it was like a one, one, eight. Like we were just like, everybody, everybody get in there. Everybody up top. Yeah. I mean, it, it you know, fair play because it worked. I mean, we took off a, a one of our back three and put in a striker. So I'm assuming it was a back two. You know, we took off Aiden Morris, who I actually Midfielder was, for a winger, technically. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and, then we, and then a few minutes later, we took off Nagby for Zawatsky. That was... Uh, and yeah, towards, Sands towards the from and Sands That for was like Madronda. for like, though. Yeah, like for like, and then like for like. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, then there was a controversial handball toward the end, right? 90-ish minute, 89, something like that. Um, yeah. Cross from Madronda into the box towards Russell Rowe and Ramirez, and Farrell's left arm makes clear contact yeah. with the ball. And I don't, I don't want to belabor this. You know, it probably should have been a handball. It, would, it absolutely it, was a handball. Ultimately was not called one. That burned a bunch of time. It was plus five in stoppage, but then the game played on. Uh, Zawadzki uh, made a big impact. Do you want to uh, describe that goal too, Haas? Yep, 98th minute. Marrera takes the ball, kind of uh, 
shoulder to shoulder with Altador, forces him into a backward somersault. Uh, plays the ball Top to Zellerion just outside the box. It's a beautiful dance. Uh, <laughs> Zellerion plays it over to Farsi. Farsi doesn't take long and plays it right back to Zellerion. And during that split couple seconds of time, Zellerion has enough time to check up into the box a cup. I think twice. He gets the ball, checks up one more time, and plays it into the six-yard box. Service. The service was and, so beautiful. Uh, mm. Zawadski's was header was yeah. also great. beautiful. Yeah. Also beautiful. Yeah. Side net, right? Uh, yeah. The goalie guessed right and was fully extended. Uh, the description I, just, on the broadcast was a scorpion header, yeah. and I thought that was a pretty good yeah. description yep. of yeah. it. Yeah. How was the stadium? I feel like it had to just apps because well, no one left at the end of the game. Like I feel disagree. like everybody knew people left. People were walking out. You can see it on if you're watching the game too. Uh, if you go back and watch it on the broadcast, don't like, tell me what to do. People, you didn't are watch it. Out. You didn't actually watch it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a ton, but you see chunks of open seats. That's why you always got to stay till the final. Always whistle. got. Yeah, yep. man, ninety eight. Yeah, the reverse. Pop- yeah. The reverse porter. It's beautiful. Yeah. It but, feels uh, good. It feels good to be on the other side, doesn't it? It felt like a win because of right. that. I mean. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it felt good to win, especially against a team like New England, who is legit awesome. Like so this is what is we, one this of the, is, I made this teams. point. I mean, I know that, I, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I don't know that I'm the one who's supposed to be making points, but I, I said this when we were doing predictions maybe last week, like, yeah, we've been doing really good against all these teams that are not in form. <laughs> right? Yeah, you're like, right, Mord. Everybody's <laughs> always right. All right, Mord. so maybe all that's right, what Mord. I'll 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 uh, I'll fill his his uh, empty space here and yeah. and make that make that point. But um, I, yeah, agreed, agreed. They were a good team, and uh, and to be able to not let them score right the own goal we we yeah. talked about that i mean it, i thought we i thought we showed up well and this ben and i were talking about this earlier it, it so so far you got philly top of the league or top of the east up there um is that true played them first yeah are i don't they even still? think they are cincy man they're uh, cincy. struggling they cincy. were up there when we played them in their top four top five team um I'm not going to count that game because it was the first game of the year. Oh, yeah. I, I see Atlanta. what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. When we played so we Philly, played a, they right, were coming yes. off. The, yes. Okay. Go ahead. Right. And then we play Atlanta. They're missing six players. Right. You know, and this was the first game that we have played a, t- a top level team in, in the East where I really felt like we walked away from that going, yeah, we belong. Yeah. We hung right in there with them. This is supposedly the number one or number two team in the East, and we gave up an own goal for for a tie. Um, it really made me believe. Like we're as a crew fan, I've literally been like, "No, I believe this team's good." Yeah, yeah but yeah. haven't been able to stand on anything. Yeah, you know, beating Atlanta with minus six players and asterisks. Yeah, you know, asterisks all over. We had our place. own asterisks. Right. This um, one does make me wish they had a full strength team when we did it, but we yeah, didn't but cause even, that. E- yeah, I mean, and this wasn't an international break. This was injuries. This is, you know, um, but it was the first game that they fielded a very good squad. That I, they, it just felt this team belongs as a top four team in the East. Yeah, more than anything else, it's kind of like yeah, we belong up there. We're justifying these MLS power rankings. Yeah, um, and it feels yeah, it feels great to not be like clinging to the line, right? right. Are we gonna be in seventh or eighth? Like, yeah, like, and, and it all depends on whether we yeah. can hang on to a one-zero lead against Orlando on the last <laughs> right. game of the season yeah. because we haven't been able to close one of the last eight games out, right? So, and it, yeah. it's been one of the first in the last couple of years where you look at it and go. It's not, are we this good? It is, It is. yeah, we're this good. Yeah. This team is is this hot right now. Yeah. They're playing this well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, so let's um, let's take a break here. Um, I know that we have an update from President Burt. Uh, 
on the 3-0 win against uh, the second revolution uh, yesterday, Sunday. Um, So we'll cut over to that after the break. And then uh, we'll go to our interview with Katie Hadley from uh, Mecklenburg Massive. And we'll go over to our predictions. So uh, let's do that now. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me in again. Um, I'm happy to talk about the Cappy's 3-0 win over the New England Civil Unrest on Sunday. First, I'd like to give a huge shout out to the Cappy Brava and all of the fans that endured some pretty terrible weather to cheer on the Cappies. The fans were loud the whole game. They sounded great on the broadcast that I watched. It was a great atmosphere, and it's clear that the team really appreciated it. The TIFO was awesome. Now for the game. We got a real good glimpse of what the crew organization plans to use the crew to for. It's not just a separate team or a way to give more playing time to academy standouts. By including a number of crew players into the crew two roster, we were shown that there is a holistic plan to how each of these teams will support each other. I expected the lineup we saw on Saturday is very likely to be what we see for the crew when they take on Indy 11 for the Open Cup. Lauren Courtois and Wu Nancy seem to be working closely together so that the tactics used by the main team are reproduced by the Capybaras, which then allows for easy transition from one team to, an, to the other as needed. Because we had so many experienced players on the field, the game was lopsided for the Capys. However, I would like to highlight some players that did exceptionally well. Sean Zawadzki and Isaiah Parente were good. Very good. Zawadzki's defensive play and distribution, combined with Parente's ability to control for the pace of play, but always focusing on moving the ball forward, meant that the Cappies dominated the midfield the whole game. Parente is a number six who is calm and collected in scoring opportunities, as he's shown once again, uh, over and over uh, and once again on Sunday. And while Zawadzki is well deserving of his, you know, dual MVP accolades for the weekend, I'm very excited to watch them play again in the Open Cup. In the attack, I was most impressed with Noah Fuson, who played at right wing back, but a very offensively minded one, and Jason Russell Rowe, who is slotted in as a center forward. I believe JRR, you know, is the best hold up player the crew has um, over Cucho, over Hermitas, you name him. And he showed that in the Cappy's first goal by holding up the play and uh, having a great assist to print it. Fuson, on the other hand, is making a strong case for being the next Crew 2 player to earn a contract with the crew. He puts on the work and the right wing back position, and I think that he uh, would make a great candidate to be Mo Farris' substitute. Finally, the defense was solid, led by outstanding performances by both Philip Quinnen and uh, under-17 goalkeeper Stanislav Slapkis. They held to the shutout. One interesting thing to notice was how the outside center backs helped in the attack. Both Hughes and Jake Morris did several offensive runs into the box and did them very, very well. I would be amiss, though, if I didn't highlight that the more traditional Crew 2 players did really well when they subbed in, with Cannon and Micheletto combined for a goal and Jordan Knight being dangerous on the left wing once again. We'll probably see a lot of crew players spend some time with the Capybaras as deemed necessary by both coaching staffs, but I want to say that the Crew 2 squad is still full of quality, and I'm very excited to see those players develop. Next up, both teams will travel to North Carolina to to face their respective rivals. I think that the crew have an easier time than the Cappies because Charlotte is struggling. They just squeaked a a, a, a tie against uh, also struggling Colorado last weekend. My prediction is a two win, two note win there, and hopefully with Sikucho again. As far as the Cappies go, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another stacked lineup to start the game on Sunday as we prepare for our Open Cup debut. I'll phone it in and just say that the Cappies will also go with a TO win. Thanks very much, guys, and uh, let's go, crew. Uh, Katie, welcome to the club. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So before we get in uh, to it and talk about uh, this weekend's game and uh, everything else, why don't Happy you tell... birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and you can talk about that too. Katie told us before we jumped on here that that it was her birthday this weekend. She just got done camping. But uh, before that, I want you to tell us about Mecklenburg Massive, uh, what it is, history of that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, to give a, a little bit of backstory, 
I was uh, born in Columbus, Ohio, but moved down to North Carolina at about age three. Um, but just like a lot of Ohioans, we, we think it's too cold. We, we head south, and that's how my parents felt. But mm-hmm. growing up, what my brother and sister and I, how we bonded was the Columbus crew. So since 96, it's always been the crew. Um, played soccer all growing up as well. So, um, a big, just soccer supporter in general. So, um, Mecklenburg massive started, um, you know, maybe the day after, uh, the infamous tweet by Grant wall, uh, that the crew were going to be moved or potentially moved to Austin. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, that's really when I was here in Charlotte and that's when, Hey, there's a lot of Ohioans, uh, down in Charlotte, let's, um, you know, let's start something here um, from from a distance. Now, I'll say when I started it, I thought it'd kind of just be more of a Twitter front. Um, and then Charlotte got a team. So uh, it's kind of a go big or go home for me. We're going to have a massive tailgate. Um, we're not going to do anything small. So um, that's awesome. Yeah. You wait, you started when you heard that they were going to be moved. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I only got to do it for like a year, so I guess started. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's like, well, they saved the team. You're like, well, well okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> pre-court. Well, those, yeah, there was a, a definite like call to action there, right? I mean, that, yeah. I think that if you're going to get involved, I mean, so I, wh- what was your what was your approach then? I mean, it sounds like it wasn't just a, hey, let's start a supporter, you know, a supporter section or a supporters subgroup in Charlotte. I mean, you, you must have been, you know, getting involved in some capacity, right? Yeah, absolutely. So definitely had the Save the Crew banners out at, there was a college game day here in Charlotte, brought it to a Panthers game, tried to get some TV time. Don't know if I made it or not, but, uh, you know, um, you know, it, it was, it realized at that point, you know, that this was a family more than it was just a yeah. club. And so um, I was going to do as much as I could do and as much as bringing community together to, to try to save the crew. Yeah. So your affiliation with the crew before that and just growing up, watching it with watching games with your siblings, um, was that just always on TV? Did you make trips up? What was that like? Yeah, we, um, I, my brother, uh, went to Ohio state for grad school. So I was able to come up and go to a lot of games um, probably over the past, you know, 10 years plus growing up, it was more on TV from a distance. Um, But yeah, my brother and sister and I were, uh, we were at the uh, MLS cup final um, when the ball was way out of bounds uh, standing right (laughs) there. Um, You know, so we've had the, we've had the hard times, but we've also had uh, the amazing times together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I've, I lived in Nashville for a few years. Um, I lived in, I now live in Chicago (laughs) uh, for a few years and like in both towns, they're both about six hours from Columbus, uh, Charlotte's give or take the same. And, you know, I see Ohio state gear all over the place and, and both of those cities, not as much crew gear, but when I wear mine, everybody recognize, you know, all the Columbus people <laughs> recognize and like, you know, strike up conversations. What's the Columbus and, and maybe crew specific community like in, in Charlotte? Yeah. I mean, I think you, you hit the nail on the head that there, I mean, I think there's probably like 10 Ohio state football bars, yeah. you know, there's right. tons of <laughs> Browns right. bars or like we are everywhere as, a, <laughs> as a people of Ohio. Yeah. Um, I think that um, similar thing, if I'm wearing my crew gear, you know, folks will talk to me about it. Hey, I'm from Ohio. I lived in Columbus. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, when I'm wearing my crew gear, it's also, hey, I'm a a Charlotte FC fan. I'm an Atlanta fan. I'm a um, Philly fan that lives here now. And, you know, you kind of nerd out when someone else likes MLS. You kind of nerd out with them of, hey, I found my people. Unless they're like awesome. You're like, I don't get get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exactly. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you talk to me? I, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the Austin fans are not just manufactured anyway. So like, yeah, I don't, I don't think it, there's a high yeah. risk there. But it's a um, robot. Yeah. Like, Get out of here, robot. Yeah. It's AI. 
<laughs> no, but I, I think you're right. Like MLS is is still kind of small enough where even cross teams is like it's still kind of part of the family, you know, or we're, we're uh we're all supporting the same the same thing. So um so then specifically, you know, you mentioned the tailgate Charlotte's had a team now. Is this the second year? Yes. Um mm-hmm. and you know, we all we all know the the infamous rain rain out last year like, like <laughs> what was the do you want to talk about the tailgate last year is it worth is it worth going through it or, or yeah or just could, yeah go ahead start there and then we'll talk about what you have planned for this year yeah i give a little backstory i mean to start it was at the end of july like the worst heat you know yeah. terrible humidity and so what happens in every uh you know, every afternoon in North Carolina when it's that bad, there are a lot of storms. Um, Mm -hmm. And so before we get to the rain delay, um, we had a fantastic uh, group of folks. A lot came down from Columbus, a lot came up from different cities and all around. And I think we sold over a hundred tickets in the crew section. It was a yellow out, um, which this year will be as well, because for some reason the yellow kit against those, whatever blue color Charlotte yeah. wears looks absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> kind of looks like had... Ben's Jersey right now for the, <laughs> yeah, <it's>, it kind of <laughs> looks like the four Columbus Jersey. It's yeah. like, oh. yes. okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love so everyone's it. favorite, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Um, and you know, we had a probably 80 plus people at tailgate, um, just trying to bring people together. We had custom koozies last year. We have custom koozies again this this year. When we get into to what the tailgate's going to be yeah. this year, I'll give you uh, maybe a sneak peek. We'll see. Um, but uh, had a march to the match. Everything was going great, and then the storms just rolled in. Um, we were sitting in the concourse for many and many hours. Yeah. Um, Didn't they, it, they kept nudging it, right? It wasn't like yes. we're calling it. It was yep. like, we'll wait an hour. We'll wait an hour. Yeah. I remember and I trying to you, watch it and I was waiting for so long. I was like, <laughs> your was struggle like, doesn't wait. compare, Ben. Don't, yeah, don't yeah. try. <laughs> no comparison. Me too, guys. Me too. <laughs> anyway, I was on my couch. I had to keep <laughs> refreshing. and yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was in the bath. It was fine. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, you know, the, we, we waited and waited. The, the match kicked off and uh, about 16 minutes later, uh, is called again. So mm. um, kind of disappointing for a lot of the fans that made the trip, but I think we had a, a great time pre-match, had a great time in the concourse. I know that concourse in and out by this point, um, if anyone wants any tips after this, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Know all, the, know all the beer spots. <laughs> it is one of those things that creates a story, though. Oh, That's yeah. the game. You, you will never, never forget that game. <laughs> I had the same thing. I think David Beckham was going to come here with the Galaxy. And it was like a lightning strike with a, yeah, and it was <laughs> delayed. And I think it got canceled in the end too, just standing around. But I remember exactly that game. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it unique. Yeah. And then when the game started back up, the infamous Zell goal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So was that like a whole other party, right? That was like at the tail end of the, they like squeezed it in at, on the last yeah, week of the season. It was a midweek season. match, like yeah. mid October. Um, and, yeah, so we, we I would say we have had a smaller crew showing, um, but that goal was was pretty great. So and uh, we won that game, right? And Charlotte was in the no, no, we tied. I, we I tied, say, right? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, we tied yeah, all yeah. these. We tied all these. <laughs> no, but it was because no. like Charlotte Charlotte was in the mix and Cincinnati and Orlando, Orlando. and there there's like lots of jockeying there. I should have known it was a tie. That was stupid. We won one of them. <laughs> yeah, I know we, we won one thing. So we, so we went yeah. up two nothing. And I told all the Charlotte fans around us. I said, "Don't worry, guys. We're gonna go up yeah. two nothing, and you guys are gonna come back and tie us. Yeah, I yeah. promise you." And then you know Charlotte <laughs> scored to come back. It's two one, and they're like, "You promised me." I'm like, "Don't worry, it's gonna happen." Because yeah. this is the story of our season. So yeah, hopefully this year will be better. <laughs> so far, yeah. it has been. <laughs> yeah, so well, we did an opposite Porter this week. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> feels good. Yeah. So, um, so then, what do you have planned for this year? Um, yeah. And how can how can folks who might be attending the game get involved or, you know, get information? Yeah, absolutely. So um, 
you know, I like to throw and we like to throw a giant tailgate. And so, you know, why not have a theme this year? And so last year we got knocked down, but this year we get up again. So why not Chumbawamba's classic tub thumping? Yes. Um, so that is 90s, the theme right? yeah, I'm of gonna the look tailgate. It up. Yeah, 90s. Is it, yeah. yeah, perfect just, with last, last, last week. Yeah, leading week. right in. Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm gonna look that up. This whole yeah, year should just be 90s, <laughs> just across the board. Like, <laughs> yeah, sweet, sweet, great. 97, 97. Too. Yeah, yeah, Ben. That that's oh. what we referenced uh, two weeks ago with Matan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. That's uh-huh. right. Okay. All right. So go on. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, we'll this this tailgate, this match, we're hoping to sing the songs that remind us of the good times, sing the songs that remind us of the better times. The tailgate will include a whiskey drink, a vodka drink, a lager drink, a cider drink. You know, we're going all in. All the drinks. Yeah, yeah, all the drinks. There'll be DJs. There'll be uh, just just a good time. Bojangles, uh, barbecue, you know, you name it. I think we'll have it. Um, Bojangles. Yeah. Fingers crossed this year, uh, you know, we actually <laughs> get to watch the match. But, yeah, like I said, it's a yellow out. So if you're coming to the game, um, wear yellow, um, be bright, and uh, be massive. And uh, we, uh, Mecklenburg Massive, we have a uh, all of our details on our Twitter site. So at mmassive96. Um, and we put all the location of the tailgate and the night before party and all that um, on there. Okay, awesome. Well, so before we let you go, um, how do you stay involved beyond, you know, just, you know, coordinating the Charlotte event and watching the games? I mean, you're kind of involved with uh, Nordeca too, right? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, it, it's a community, right? So the crew, we're on Twitter, we're... <laughs> For better or for worse, we're, we're definitely on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no one has been like, I'm not on Twitter. Everyone's like, no, we're on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, we're on, we're on Twitter. We're strong on Twitter. Um, we always try to get up to some games. Um, we have some local watch parties. Um, but you know what? It's just the community over the years that uh, myself and others here have built um, with folks that live everywhere, right? I mean, one of my favorite uh you know, text message chain is with probably seven, uh, seven crew fans. And, um, man, that thing just lights up during matches. So, you know, yeah. it's all about the communities. I, I found that, you know, MLS initially was kind of where all of us weirdos found each other. Um, and so <laughs> I feel like that's especially true and it's an accepting place, especially the crew community. And, um, yeah, just try to get to matches and, host uh, any away fans that are crew fans for the away day in Charlotte. Awesome. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely try and get down there for a game sometime. And uh, if you're ever in Columbus, hit us up. All right. Sounds good. Thank okay. you guys. Quick question before we go is yeah. Mecklenburg slang for Charlotte. Ah, it is the County that Charlotte sits in. Ah. So it's a uh, queen Charlotte of Mecklenburg. And that's how oh. uh, the city and the county got it. Another one of them queen cities. Yeah. Yeah, but but that. that's that's not why it's the queen city though, is it? Isn't Yeah, that's why it's it the queen is. city. The, okay. Yeah, the yeah. queen of the United States lives there. It, it was actually the original <laughs> queen city. Like, okay. Actually, since he, right. since he was much later just because it was the second biggest city yeah. in Buffalo because it was the second biggest right. city. That's yeah, that's um, what I'm familiar but, with. But I thought Toronto was the queen city. <laughs> I'm so confused, guys. This is uh, yeah, I think that's South America. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Canada is maybe not the same country. But I'm really <laughs> what do you know about international things? It's yeah. Just not a state. <laughs> All right. Uh, sounds good. Well, thanks. Thanks again for making time uh, to chat with us, and we look forward to notching a a real life win there in Charlotte this weekend, <laughs> uh, April twenty second. So uh, thanks again, Katie, and go crew. Go crew. Go crew. Thank you, guys. See ya. See ya. And we're back. Um, big thanks to Katie again for uh, jumping on. I'm sure that happy birthday, happy birthday, of course. Yeah, and this uh, this game is going to be great. 
It's not going to be a tie. And we'll get into that here in a few minutes. Spoilers. I think we're going to win. Um, but before we do, I there were a couple other things that we had on our uh, agenda that I wanted to go through. Number one is um, our goalkeeper situation. Is is yeah. it awkward? I mean, room I, is room still hurt? Oh, it's awkward. Uh, <laughs> Gotta be. He's still hurt. So maybe it's not awkward just yet. He is still hurt. Um, but uh, what's what's it called? Rip Van Winkle. What, what is it, Tracy? The the hippie <laughs> hippie whip it McAllister. What, what what is it? Uh, Mickey Mantle. What yeah, what is you, it? Uh, Wally baseball Pip. stuff. Wally Pip. Apparently, yes. Alexi Lawless Wally Pip uh, Chip. knows this more readily than we do. But um, yeah, so Schulte's doing a great job, right? He's yeah. Um, He's doing a great job. Room is is a great keeper, but um, what do you think happens when he's healthy? You think we're going to bring him back, or I I don't think you can mess with the hot hand and the chemistry of the team that's rolling. Hmm. That that would be my take, but honestly, Nazi's not afraid to mix things up, formation wise, lineup wise. So you think he'll start up top? There's yeah. a chance he is Dutch. Yeah, okay. I think when he's healthy, if he's 100%, he'll start. Yeah. And I think we have enough other games with the like the League's Cup and stuff like that coming up that Schulte will still get a good run in, and he might do what he did this weekend where he like puts him down to crew two and lets him play. Yeah, so wh- – and, and I know that th- this is not on the agenda, but – I I don't know the rules and maybe we need to get our buddy Core with a hat back on here. But like, what's up, Core? What what is? Uh, these guys are playing Saturday night and Sunday. Are at some point don't they have to like put a ring on it or something? Like, you, like is Schulte still a MLS Next Pro player or is he? So like, what is the deal? He is not. Okay, he's a first team player. And I know there's rules regarding how many games someone from Crew 2 can play for the first team without actually I signing a first team contract. Three. But okay. I don't know vice versa. I thought it was three games. That's what I remember. So, like, I, that's not a lot. I don't know if this is fact, but that may also break down the halves as well. Like, if you play a half or, you right. know, you only, so. Right. Yeah, I mean, the MLS next rules are, like, kind of <laughs> yeah, ridiculous anyway. so what, I, what i'm hearing they're is testing the waters if room is healthy he's going to come back i remember you know grunenbaum played a lot when hesburn was injured um and it wasn't that awkward you know that and it wouldn't surprise me if nancy decided to start schulte but okay. i think room will start the other wouldn't surprise yeah, the other thing that is also not on the dock is when kucho comes back is it is it Ramirez or is it? Uh, you know, I, I would rather. Yeah, s- I, they got to play. Cucho it's Cucho for sure. It's Cucho. Would he play Ramirez as the proper nine and and pull like Matan? I don't think so. Really? No. Oh, Matan's oh, been I playing too good. No, I'm with you, Ben. I'm interested to see what he'll do. What? Because I, I think he's going to. You get guys are the conflating field. the drought, the 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 Cucho thing. You know, you somebody. I think it was Ben was trying to tell me that he hadn't scored in seven yeah, games. Yeah, Ben was hating on him last week. He was like, "Oh, he hasn't whoa, scored whoa, in whoa, seven." He said games. he's the worst signing in, two. in club history. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Hernandez, I have Stating nothing but the facts. utmost respect for you. We know for a fact, God, dude. He's we awesome. know for a fact that he listens to the show. Correct. And so we should make sure that we're clear here. But what we did say last week was that he hasn't played every game, so it's not fair to say that he hasn't scored in seven games so no way in hell ramirez starts over cucho i'm with you if cucho's healthy with you. he starts but with i don't cucho, think that's I think. his i think he starts with cucho yeah. because he's that not would be a cool. nine he's a he, pl- he plays on the wing the for wavy. columbia mm-hmm. like and he, he's a false nine put him up there it, it's it, i'm telling you it's zell ramirez cucho and it's we, we score a thousand goals a game it sounds great i love that i love that Okay, so the other thing is uh, Aiden Morris got the U.S. call-up. They're playing Mexico, I think, in Phoenix. I could be wrong. I know that none of you know, so 
Um, so <laughs> as long as as long as the four of us are talking about it, it's in Phoenix. Uh, Wednesday, a published day. So this is we're recording Monday. Um, yeah, and he'll probably see yeah. the field, right? Yeah, we were debating offline if if that's the reason why he got pulled because I do think it's kind of bizarre he got pulled for Yao in the whatever 80th minute or something like that. It seems kind of bizarre, but maybe that could be the reason. I I, I think with his stats and his form, you there's no reason you don't start him alongside Kellen Acosta as the number six. Okay, so let's get into the predictions. I'm not going to fall into the same trap that I always fall into, which is to start talking about this week's game. We're going to talk about last week's game. You know why I remember? So I was the only one who said we were going to tie, uh, which puts me, I think it puts me back up um, to the top. You're still tied. Well, I'm tied for the top. Okay. So here's the current scores. Ben and I are uh, tied with four points. Mm-hmm. I I don't we think I have, have last week's. I think we have five points. I don't think I have last week's predictions handy without Mort here. But pause. What were last week's predictions? They don't matter because I was the only one who got the right result. But go ahead. That's also true. Mars predicted two two. Mort predicted three one. I'm sorry. All of these are with the crew score first. Uh, ben predicted two one. Trey predicted one zero and I predicted three two. Well now when Trey predicted one zero, I said something like I would wear an Austin jersey if we ever got a one to zero result this season. Mm-hmm. I just want to make okay. sure that you guys know that I was serious about that. What if and we it lose was super zero? serious? Really close to happening too. I mean I nailed the crew score. You said one no, zero one result. to zero. No, I didn't. No, I didn't roll the tape. No. No, <laughs> we don't have it on tape, so no. I don't think there's any way for us to ever know. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and listen to it. One to zero, one to zero, uh, crew is what I meant. I think, although you think, you think. All right, I'll go back and listen. Yeah, to it. Uh, we don't need yeah. to burn any more time on that. So I scored a point, and everybody else did not, and that means that I have sure. four points. Uh, Haas and Trey have three points. Ben also has four points. I don't know why I'm reading it in this way. <laughs> and more. <Yeah. laughs> Let me start over. Let me start over. Uh, Ben and I have four points. Haas and Trey have three, and Mort has two. And that may be why he skipped this episode. Probably. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, I do want to say before we get going that we are giving away a signed Federico Pippa. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be Freddie Guayim. it's going to be a, a Frederico uh <laughs> it's going to be him. He's going to come yeah, he, and he's going to have a big sign on him that says uh, it's Federico. Is that's what the sign yeah. says. <laughs> but it's yeah, he, he it's a it's a line cook at Roosters off 161. It's not who you think it is. But it's still a picture of him. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the one that's open in New Albany, not the, so, the yeah, one. New Albany, it's not the good one in Cleveland in right. 161. All right, I'm not. I don't actually know how to transition out of that, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's talk about the Charlotte score. There's going to be a prize, is what I'm. Is what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. First person to three gets that prize, and we is it will three in a row? reset everybody. Yeah, no, it's um three in total because no one, <laughs> right? Even the people that are guessing, <laughs> and the, like in the Himmer. I thought we were bad, but like her oh, from yeah. last week is is already yeah. in the lead. So you got to catch up to him or her. They did right. not. No one okay. got it. So right. okay, yeah. It's first person to three, and then we're reset. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's talk about Charlotte. Um, Mort did send his prediction for the game. He said, what did he say? Three to two? Well, he said it like this. He said, hello, mate. <laughs> We're going to have, it's going to be a three to two uh, tip of the hat. Oh, right, because he has his <laughs> accent. So you're Gee. approximating his accent? Yeah. yeah okay. You know, I think you're doing a pretty good hard. job. So, and, and what was the score then? Oh, I th- I think it was the three to three to three to two. It that's that's I don't know. I think it's English. It's so I'm very bad you at are that. you are speaking English right now. I bet you guys were like, was that Mort? And it's but it's not. It's okay, me. so it's Ben. Okay, guys. so so Mort says three to two. 
Yeah. Let's, it seems like let's, a lot of goals. But. Before we, before we <laughs> Charlotte do. Charlotte has yeah, one yes, win. Yes, thank you. Thank you. This is what Wait, I need. Yeah, go ahead. To be fair, Charlotte has nine goals, though. So, I mean, they've at least been scoring. One win, four losses, three draws. Wow. Okay, I like it. So, uh, Ben, you're first up, as always. And don't complain uh, this week. I'm not. I never complained. Every Who week. do you think you I am? Did. Boriello from New England? I'm not. You um, added letters to his name. Yeah, it's late in the pod. I mean, if they stuck around for this long, bless them. <laughs> uh, I'm going 2 nothing crew. Our, our defense... It's crazy. Like, uh, you know, we play it attacking way. We only play, you know, three in the back. It feels like we're always going to be exposed, but we keep, we keep either like shutting teams down or like scoring. I just don't think scoring own goals. Well, yeah. (laughs) I mean, I was just thinking like if no one has had a brace, uh, Degenic has scored as many as any other player in the MLS on our team. So, yeah. uh, I mean, we have, what was the stat that 10 different people have scored? That's crazy. I still think that's a. You're Crazy. talking about a different stat than I am, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as you said, it, numbers are tough. It's late in the pod. I it's not lost on me that you haven't made your prediction yet. Uh, I said two nothing, didn't oh, I? Oh, I guess you did. You, you did. did. Okay, you did. I'm sorry, you yes. did. Okay, two to zero. Yeah. Uh, Trey. Ooh. Okay. Um, Charlotte's not very good in Charlotte. In May, but actually April. Uh, <laughs> if I may, I would. I would. If I, may. <laughs> I would not have corrected you. Yeah. You said May, and I was like, "Damn, this year is going by so fast." No, but like, Let's, Trey, how old is your baby? Like twelve days or something? Like, yes, I. This is totally is acceptable. Number. It's totally one hundred percent. I don't know yeah. what day it is. Yeah. Uh, two two nothing crew. You don't know what month it is. What, That's what I, I two said. Two nothing crew. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Right. I don't remember five minutes ago. Pause. Yeah, no, no, that's also true. Uh, Charlotte has conceded two goals per match on mm-hmm. average. Yep, and they have scored zero they are goals. Fourteenth place. You're just saying things you're reading. Uh, I really wanted to go two zero with you guys, but. Let's do it. Let's do it. Like it's everybody. I'm going three zero. I'm going three zero. There it is. Oh ma'am. No longer friends. <laughs> okay. All right. I say two to one. That's a good one. Crew win. Yes. Yeah, you got to specify. Is that the result you're looking for? Yeah, two to two to one. And I think you guys are right. I think we're going to score two. Um, I don't know that I would have been able to. Uh, calculate uh, what the average goals per game would have been if Ben had not said that they scored nine goals in eight games and that that was approximately one. But um, uh, I think that's right. I think I think they're going to score. And what did they do last week? Oh, two to two tie. You know what math I did do? Queso dunk take math. Tell us, tell us more. <laughs> okay, so I think the dunk tank is out of the question. But Ben, what we can do, queso. I don't like the way that sounded. <laughs> <laughs> what that. would you do, pies for, for of queso, queso. <laughs> rather than whipped cream? And whoever loses has to go mm, queso before they get hit every single time. Yes, <laughs> we should do that. And I think we, what we should we should do something like that. But we should absolutely like say it's like a dollar per related and then give that to money what? to charity or something. What like is? That. The, can we have some more context? Queso. Yeah, you dress like pre court. I I actually think you should wear. And you know what? And I want to throw a wrinkle. I want to throw a wrinkle because I've been doing a lot of thinking you're about not, this. You're not. You're just talking more about the result, but you're not talking about like what leads to the result. Whoever loses has the least amount of points. I thought that at the this was just season. like we. You have to fun, wear a not. jersey. Why is this no. evolving? It's I, got to. I'm Stick making it time. reasonable. He wanted to do the whole dunk tank thing, which is like completely just not even a thing. Queso you, dunk tank. You want to do queso? We could do that. I don't like that. Don't say that again. 
Stop saying that. Say something else. <laughs> pies of queso. Yeah, queso pies. Queso pies? Question yeah. Mark? Yeah. No, I, what I think we should do, yeah, we do it. It's a dollar. But I don't think we should buy an Austin jersey. I think we should get together and draw one on like a white shirt and put like and, – and dye it and do the thing. Because I don't want to give Austin FC money. I, in general, I have it's been just conflicted. going to the MLS. I have been, yeah. I mean, I have been conflicted yeah. on that. In in all honesty, I have thought like that that's a bad idea is to okay. spend 140 bucks on an Austin jersey. I will give you that. Yeah. Go Every for, yeah. other word you have said is insane. <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, what you do. It because I just for some reason I I have a I have it like you know the mind's eye I'm gonna be the one that loses because I never win anything so I have a feeling it's gonna be me and like I think it should be I mean I think it should be a queso dunk tank but if we do queso I, I, I don't know, queso, handle I don't that. stop saying that <laughs> stop saying those words in succession. You can say pie. I of don't queso. even understand. <laughs> I don't even understand. Let's kill this thing. Yeah, let's wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know how we're going to actually reward or disincentivize the winner or loser of this competition. Um, there's a lot of conversation that will or will not be included in this podcast based, <laughs> based on <laughs> guidelines from the FCC, IRS, <laughs> file your taxes. I don't know. Yeah, man. Um, FBI. FBI. We could get in trouble for what was just discussed, but uh, hopefully that will get cut. Ben, please take care of us. Uh, uh, I won't. Anyway, if you're in, if you're in uh, North Carolina, go to the tailgate. If you're not in North Carolina, go to North Carolina and then go to the tailgate. Uh, yeah, what are you Beautiful doing? Beautiful country. I, I think that uh, in lieu of Hello, mate. in lieu of North Carolina, uh, the members of this podcast, less myself, of course, because I am a prisoner of my own home, uh, will be at Ben's house for the game. And uh, so, you know, maybe you guys could check in. We'll see. Yeah, um, yeah we'll try. Whether or not that occurs, I believe we're going to get a win. A two to one win. Yeah, feels good. Fact. Don't, oh, I uh, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. No, but we'll, what we will do is go crew. Go, go crew. crew. Thanks everyone for joining the club. We hope you'll listen next week and every week, even in the off season, to celebrate or commiserate. We'll save you a seat. If you like this podcast, please give us five stars and subscribe. You can email us at upper90clubpod at gmail.com. That's upper90clubpod at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at upper90clubpod. Go crew! Messi is not a good name to have on a bag of chips. (laughs) He's going to make some messy chips. Or any food. (laughs) Any food for that matter. Yeah, you're right. Probably because I got me some messy chaps. <laughs> okay. <laughs>